Hello everyone, this is a Vector Labs programming series video on two-dimensional Perlin noise. I will go over the basics and explain the algorithm as well as show its implementation in MATLAB and C++ languages. Eventually, I will also post the complete source code on my website, nerdstrom.org. You may have seen images like this in graphical software packages like Adobe Photoshop or Paint.net via the render clouds effects available in them. Or perhaps you are trying to develop a game with some random element like terrain. A game called Minecraft is a notable example that uses a modified Perlin noise algorithm to generate its in-game terrain. The original algorithm was developed by Ken Perlin in 1980s to generate better looking textures. No matter the purpose though, Perlin noise has become a common tool used to generate weight maps in two and three dimensional spaces, although it can be used for an arbitrary number of dimensions. For additional background information on the algorithm, you can check out the Wikipedia article under note number one in the video description and Ken Perlin's website on noise under note number two. As an aside, the image you see here was actually constructed from multiple layers of noise of increasing frequency and decreasing amplitude. This is sometimes referred to as fractal noise and is illustrated here. The different layers have the same dimensions but the noise becomes more dense. When the layers are added together, the image on the bottom is formed. To learn more about this, please refer to the website under note number three. With that out of the way, we can move on to the actual algorithm. Now, I expect you to already know some topics from linear algebra, such as vectors and dot or inner products. So if you do not know these, you should probably pick up a book on the subject or do some research online. When you generate the noise using this algorithm, and in general, you start off with some size considerations. Most common shape used is a square, but your region doesn't have to be square. Your noise region is first split up into a lattice of m many rows and n many columns of cells. The more cells a region has, the higher the frequency of the noise. In the illustration, we have a region that is split into four rows and four columns for a total of 16 lattice cells. After we have decided on the dimensions of the lattice, the lattice points are seeded with random vectors. Here I call the entire array G and the individual vectors get subscripts based on their location in the lattice. These vectors define the gradients in their vicinity. Now let's consider some arbitrary sample point P in our region at which we would like to know the value of the noise function. First thing we do is determine the displacement of the corners of the lattice cell relative to our sample point, shown in the illustration as vectors S in blue color. Next we take the dot or inner product of the displacement vectors S with their respective gradient vectors G to obtain the four gradient values at our sample point named Q11 through Q22 in the illustration. Now in case you're wondering what gradients I'm referring to since all you see is a sample point in a vector field, consider just one gradient vector. If you take the dot product of the relative coordinates of all points around the gradient vector and the vector itself, you will obtain the heights of the gradient surface at those sample points as seen in this illustration. The plane at z equals zero represents an array of sample points around a gradient vector located at the origin. The z coordinates of the tilted plane are calculated from the dot product of the point coordinates and the gradient vector. So when we take the dot products in our algorithm, we actually evaluate the height of similar gradient at some particular point in space. Now that we have the values of the four gradients at our arbitrary sample point within the lattice, we need to weigh these four values to calculate the height of the surface at our sample point. In his works, Perlin generally uses a polynomial curve to interpolate between points. People have often substituted simple linear interpolation due to its simplicity and have gotten decent results. Although both methods are actually very easy and I'll go over both of them starting with bilinear interpolation.
This method is very easy to visualize as you first interpolate between the two pairs of values along one axis, in this case the x-axis, to obtain a pair of values R1 and R2. Then you interpolate between these two points to obtain the value at the desired sample point. The nonlinear interpolation is a little bit harder to visualize, but it's still pretty simple. To describe it briefly, it is a weight sum of all four points where the weight for each given point is given by some nonlinear function shown as F11 through F22 in the illustration. Perlin often used the S curve defined in one dimension as 3t squared minus 2t cubed. The curve or surface works in higher dimensions through repetitive products of the formula across all the dimensions as shown in the lower equation. The equation for two dimensions which we will be using is given in the middle. This interpolating curve, like other curves, starts with a value of 1 near the origin and decreases to 0 as you move away from the origin. As you can see from the illustration, each corner of the lattice cell has the weighing function rotated so that the peak is at the proper xy coordinate. As would be expected of a good weighing function, when all four of these are added together, the result is unity as can be seen by the flat plane in the bottom graph. Now before we move on to the implementation of the algorithm, let's review what steps are necessary. First, we pick a region and split it into a lattice of cells, which we seed with random vectors. Then, as we loop across all the desired sample points in the region, we perform the following. The corners of the cell are located relative to the sample point. The four gradient values are calculated at the sample point by taking the dot product of the displacement vectors and their respective gradient vectors. Finally, the noise value at the sample point is interpolated from the gradient values. This is repeated for every sample point in the region until completion. Now we can move on to the actual code. I will show the code implementations with both linear and S-curve interpolants. However, the S-curve version will only be shown in MATLAB. As a side note, if you don't have access to MATLAB, you can use Octav, which is a free MATLAB clone with most of its functionality and compatible language. The noise plots generated for this video were done with Octave. Also, a disclaimer, I have not yet tested the C++ version of the code and what you see here is simply a ported version of the MATLAB code yet untested. Once all the code is fully done, I will post it on my website with a link under note number 5. The implementation that I will be covering in this video is that of a function which will generate a noise map which can be used for other purposes. In MATLAB code, the function Perlin2D takes in three values and outputs three two-dimensional arrays with coordinate data. In C++ code, the function would receive three input variables and three pointers in which it would store the output. The xn and yn input variables specify the number of columns and rows respectively in the lattice, and the sps variable specifies the number of samples per side of the lattice cell. Onto memory allocation and variable declaration. In MATLAB, this isn't really necessary, although you should allocate the space required for the output array by initializing it with a call to the zeros function. In C, we have to declare two integers, m and n, which store the size of the output array. We also declare pointers to the two dimensional arrays, which will hold the components of the gradient vectors. Then we allocate the memory for all of this data. Now we are going to seed the gradient vectors and initialize the array of sample points. In both versions of the code, I'm using a function called randRange for random range, which outputs random numbers between a low and a high value specified by the user, in this case minus one and plus one. This is a non standard function, however, you should be able to write it fairly easily. I will include it when I post the code. Since C++ doesn't have a mesh grid function, I wrote a nested for loop which does the same thing as the MATLAB version of the code. At this point in time, we have created a lattice of gradient vectors and created an array of sample points. 
we are now ready to move to the main loop of the algorithm where we calculate the actual values of the noise surface. The main part of the algorithm is a nested for loop which loops over every index of the sample point array. First, for every point, the algorithm calculates the lower corner coordinate of the lattice cell in which the point resides by truncating the coordinates of the sample point with a call to the floor function. There's also some error checking, which prevents indices from going out of bounds of the arrays along the upper edges of the lattice. Next, we calculate the displacement vectors S. Since we know that every cell is a unit square, if we know the relative location of the point inside the cell, we can compute all the necessary vectors. XR and YR store the coordinates of the sample point relative to the lower left corner of the cell. The rest is a little bit of vector math. Since MATLAB array indices start with 1 and not 0, we have to add 1 to the truncated sample point coordinates xc and yc to obtain the gradient vector indices gi and gj. The final part of the loop consists of calculating the gradient values at the sample point by taking the dot products of the displacement and gradient vectors and interpolating between them. The lerp2 function is not standard, but should be of no problem to write. It will be included with the post-it code. The C++ version is pretty much the same as the MATLAB version, except for syntax and that array indices start with zero, which means that the truncated sample point coordinates xc and yc can be used directly as the gradient array indices. Here we can see what kind of output we can expect from this code. The plot on the left is a single frequency sample. The plot on the right shows multiple noise frequencies. If you look close enough at the plot on the left, you can see portions which look like creases. I believe this is a side effect of using bilinear interpolation. On the right, each layer of the multi-frequency plot was smoothed with a simple blur filter prior to the addition to the stack so it looks much nicer. Many people are satisfied with the results of the algorithm with bilinear interpolation. However, the code that generated these plots did not run as fast as I would have liked it to, and I wanted to make the output look as nice as possible. So I decided to rewrite the code to add S-curve interpolation and make it faster. To make the code faster, I've restructured the sample point distribution in such a way as to make every lattice cell have all the points in the cell be located at the same relative coordinates, which is simply done by using an odd number of sample points per cell side. Since all the points in each cell are located at the same relative coordinates, we only have to compute data like displacements and interpolation weights once which saves on compute times, especially since there is no need to compute polynomials in the for loop. The nested for loop then instead of looping over every point in the entire region, loops over every cell in the lattice and performs fairly quick matrix operations on it. The gradients are computed for every point in the cell at the same time, then the interpolant weights are applied, and the matrix is added to the output array Z. Finally, here is a plot of some fractal noise generated with the last function shown in this video. It's smooth and has no creases compared to the linearly interpolated version. It also runs orders of magnitude faster. Of course, just as an example from the point of view of some game developer trying to make randomly generated terrain, there is not much you can do with this generated height map as is. The terrain is just too regular to be realistic. But with one quick easy post-processing step, I generated something that looks much more like terrain. It's much flatter and you have something to work with. Maybe even add it to another similarly generated random tile to get a more interesting terrain. But this here is where I will leave you to consider applications for yourself. Thank you for your time. This has been a Vector Labs programming series video on two dimensional Perlin noise. If you like the video, please subscribe. Feedback, comments, suggestions, and requests are always appreciated.